All right, so the LinkedIn profile, personal and business. And we saw this, the spot. It's under interests. Under interests is where we create company pages. That is a bit anticlimactic in that, okay, it's just another screen of your LinkedIn. What else do I do with it? It's everything that we've been talking about throughout this whole course, last month, this course, and continuing. About the content, what do I share? We've talked about it several times previously. If you're new this month, check the notes from the last month, watch the videos from last month, and visit Social Media Examiner on a regular basis. They're telling you all the time ideas of what to share, what works well on LinkedIn, ideas of what to put in on Facebook. So since I won't be reiterating that, what to post, check last month's content or Social Media Examiner. But I've created, let's say, a company profile. I'm going to need to use it as I did the company profile on Google+, as I use the company profile on LinkedIn, I mean on Facebook. But um, let's see what other things we have here that could be very effective for you as a person or as a business. We have groups. If you go under interests, groups. Groups are very similar to Google Plus communities. They're also similar to Facebook groups. And they're somewhat similar to Twitter hashtags. Question? With, with your company profile, do you recommend Just changing, little, changing your posts. Just like your oh, um, <clears throat> there are the two schools of thought about keeping your profiles consistent or changing them per audience. I think they're both a legitimate way to do it personally, and most of my colleagues uh, prefer to keep it consistent. If you have a completely different style in different networks or even vaguely different, that's not good branding. Notice like the branding of Coca-Cola or the branding of LinkedIn. They're using the same kind of colors over and over. McDonald's using the same kind of colors and pictures and people in their content. It's not so different because then you're, you say, is this a McDonald's ad or is it a jack-in-the-box ad? So keeping it consistent keeps your brand consistent. <clears throat> Groups are like the Google Plus communities <coughs> in that they are places where people congregate on a topic. You can take the quick tour at some point if you'd like. But what I see on this screen is then, okay, my groups, discover groups, highlights. I haven't connected to any groups. There's no highlights. Well, if I go to discover... <coughs> Again, at the moment, since I haven't really used it, I can't discover anything. So, where do they have it at? They change this stuff all the time. Okay, search at the top. <clears throat> at the top, we've got search, and on the left side, we've got filters. I'm going to search LinkedIn to find people. I'm going to search LinkedIn to find a job. I'm going to search LinkedIn to find groups on a topic. So if at the top search you change that over to groups and then, okay, I'm a realtor, so I'm going to type in real, realtor. It may be suggesting groups, it may be suggesting people. I'm going to ignore those for the moment, but I'll continue to type realtor and press enter. These things may be useful. Yes, I'll get back to them. But I'm just going to search a keyword, and I've specifically just said show me groups results of realtor. Here are groups that you found with that keyword, different languages. Here are, the, here are the groups. The Florida Realtor Insights, 89 members. The Referrals Real, Real Estate Canada, 39,000 members. Uh, Real, Realtors Referral Group, 12,000 members. California Real Estate, 10,000 members. So this is reminiscent of Google Plus Communities. Facebook has a, a version of this. Most people don't know about it or use it. There's also places where you can congregate on a topic, groups in Facebook. And here in LinkedIn, it's got it as well. And we saw the value of that in Google+. I have no connections at the moment. But if I join the Florida Realtail, Realtors community, and I live in Florida, then I have access to 19,000 people in that topic. So. Taking a quick look, California real estate. 
I won't click join, but I will click the title of a group to preview it. 10,000 members about this group. California real estate home houses for sale. California, Los Angeles, buyers. Steve Jacobson is the founder. I don't quite get any preview of what people are doing here. I have asked to join. So someone is going to check my profile. Let me see all the stuff that this realtor claims to be about. Okay, I see stuff there. It's on topic. It's relevant. We'll let them join. And now I have access to 10,000 connections um, on this realty group. Let's say something else. I'm going to search groups for just vaguely, let's say, food, Victor's Bakery, Travel and Hospitality Forum, Chef Work Job Culinary, Food Industry Jobs, Food Industry Careers, Food Safety, Hospitality and Food. So again, 97,000 members. Some of them say join, some of them say view. Some of them are exclusive. The join is someone will check you out and let you in. It looks like the ones of you are a little bit more open because at least you will be able to see something, who are the members, and <clears throat> a little bit more info about, about the group. So this is networking in the new world. If you go to a networking event in a real location, the group of 100 people that are there, that's LinkedIn. That's primitive LinkedIn right there. You're connecting with people at a classic networking event. Modern times then, it's all digital. These are people that um, I might want to connect with at some point. I'll see a full list of people when I ask to join, and they allow me. The point of this also is like Google+. Plus. I can put something into this group that 97,000 people would see. It's still up to me to think about, am I sharing a photo? Am I sharing a link, a video, an article? What am I c contributing to this group of 97, nearly 98,000 people? Yes? Once you join that group, can those 97,000 people email you? Not email directly, but they will be able to communicate you through, link through LinkedIn. So it's a way to connect with them. Also, because um, uh, I use the groups, it's amazingly awesome. If you have a question, you can reach out to industry-specific people. It's like a like a message board. Yeah, a mess it's, it's really wonderful. Yeah, yeah, so it's not that you're going to be in direct communication with them clogging your inbox. Okay. It's that you connect with them, you will see here what people are posting or asking, and you will be able to contribute to it in LinkedIn. So as you use it and you connect with groups, that's when the Discover tab and such will will populate. That's when it'll say, you seem to be interested in food groups. Here are more that might be relevant to you. You seem to be connecting with realtors. Here's more that might be useful to you. So I do recommend to take advantage of groups. They're free. But again, if, you, if you're going to join, why would they let you in? So make sure your profile is filled in, your biography all about that relates to that group. If I'm trying to join that Florida-only group and all over my profile it says California and someone checks my profile and says, well, they're in California, this is a Florida group, they won't let me in. And then I can't reach those people. It's multilingual. So if I want to focus only on the Italian groups, I can say show me only those. So that's something to explore on your own as a way to reach more people on a topic. Any uh, questions on groups? Okay, here's another one. This is a really interesting one. Uh, if you go over to interests, click on SlideShare. SlideShare.net has existed for several years. It's like <clears throat> the YouTube of PowerPoint. YouTube obviously is a place where people upload videos and share videos and comment on videos and go viral on YouTube. SlideShare is like that but for PowerPoint presentations. And you think the PowerPoint presentations are super boring, why would anyone want this? Well, this is content. These are 
presentations on topics that hopefully you know about and want to share and want people to see and find out and maybe hire you. Just a quick look here. The uh, Sven Peters, The Secret Sauce of Successful Teams. This is a PowerPoint presentation that's been shared here and it's been viewed 107,000 times. KPOs shared Future Social, 10 Key Trends in Social Media. That sounds like cool information that I should learn about. Yes, me and 115,000 other people watched this or viewed this. So if I want to take a look at it, you just click and it's right there. It's a PowerPoint. Next slide, next slide, 110 slides of free information. Okay, on the one side of it, going to SlideShare is useful for me to keep up to date, to learn something, to follow accounts on these topics. On the flip side, I'm a realtor. I'm going to put together a five slideshow presentation, top five tips to buying your first house. I'm going to give away free advice to help me get hired as a realtor because thousands, hundreds of thousands of people use SlideShare, especially after LinkedIn bought them. They've been around a while. They were so popular and useful. LinkedIn paid a few hundred million dollars or whatever for them, and now they're right there, front page on LinkedIn. More people are using the SlideShare. This is another aspect. This is a day that we can spend talking about if we had, you know, day five of this class. We could talk about this network. Create a profile, upload presentations, people can view, can, sh can like, can download, can share, can help you go viral like every other social network. The focus, though, is on presentations. Now, what is the guy that makes the presentation get out of it? There's branding all over the presentation that okay. says who I am, here's okay. my website, okay. hire me. So he's got a whatever service. Okay. And it's SEO, right? It's, it's content. It's content, shared. exactly. Okay. If I go on Google and search for top 10 trends of social media, this could be found because those are the keywords in the right. PowerPoint. Hmm. So there's the branding. Every single page, apparently he's affiliated with Hootsuite. But every single page, he's got his Twitter account right there. Go follow me on Twitter at least. At best, hire me because I know what I'm doing. So this is SlideShare. I'll make the note here that um, we've got right uh, YouTube share video, uh, SlideShare share presentations. I say PowerPoint, but that's not the only presentation software, right? On the Mac, you have a uh, Keynote, and you've got other ones, but um, PowerPoints or uh, Keynotes on the Mac. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier about podcasts and audio. I'll write it down here. Um, SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com. SlideShare.net, YouTube.com, SoundCloud, share or publish podcasts or audio blogs, or audio presentations. And that obviously assumes you have an audio to upload, but on SoundCloud they've got the free version, they've got the paid version. SlideShare same thing, they've all got free and paid versions nowadays. The free versions work really well for most people. Um, then you can go look at SoundCloud on your own, but that's where I'm going to record a five-minute podcast and upload it once a week. And then people can go find it on SoundCloud, on iTunes, download it, share it, get fame for myself. Yeah, I'm going to give away every week. I'm going to do the Social Media Minute. <laughs> And for one minute, I talk about social media for free. Well, one minute of social media is not enough for you to really learn it. So as someone hears your show, every week they're hearing one little tip about social media. One day they're like, well, they know what they're talking about. Let me reach out to them, perhaps. Let me send them an email. Let me hire them. We give away free stuff in order to get something <coughs> paid from it. Maybe I have a hundred, maybe I have my hundred foolproof tips to change your life, and I'm sharing the abridged 10-slide version of it. When you get to slide 10, 
it says, the rest of the 90 great tips are found on our website. Click here. They go to your website and then they pay the $50 or whatever to download the rest. So there's many of these uh, focused or niche networks. Focused niche networks on a specific topic. You know, on Twitter I can share any picture or link or PowerPoint or audio. So can I do that on Facebook, etc. YouTube, focused on video. You're not going to upload, you know, a poem that you wrote. It's got to be a video. On SlideShare, you're not going to upload a video. It's a PowerPoint. On SoundCloud, you're not going to upload uh, a PowerPoint. It's sound. It's a niche. It's focused. And that's under interests. And then lastly here we've got business services. I'm a realty company and I want to hire more people to help me um, grow and get more customers. Well, I have a spot here to reach quality candidates. Uh, there is a paid aspect of this. I haven't looked at it recently to tell you the full details, but here's another investment that you might think about doing, just like you might think about paying to boost your Facebook posts to reach more of an audience. Here, if you're trying to find quality candidates to, to work for you or with you, we have, the whole we have the whole LinkedIn job posting system. Um, you put a company, job title, location, other details about the job, and then those that use LinkedIn to find a job could find you. That's why this is the professional social network. So you could use it to try to get a job, you could use it to post a job. There's other aspects here under talent solutions, so that's sort of like human resources things. Not everyone needs that, but uh, you know, like headhunting, human resources, talent. <clears throat> that one's not free. Advertise, just like over on Facebook, you can put your content, pay for it to reach more people. Well, that's what we do in the real world. I put an ad in the paper, I put an ad on a billboard, I put an ad in the radio. In the real world, that's helpful because that lets people know you exist. In the digital world, I can survive pretty well on all the networks for free, but if I have some budget, you know, $5, $10, $50, $100 to spend once in a while, I could spend to make these posts and content of mine appear to more people, to the right people. The great thing about advertising in any of these social networks is that we can target a lot better than in the real world. You know, in the real world, targeting would be like, I'm Victor's Bakery, therefore I'm going to put my ad in a cooking magazine, not in a general interest magazine. In the digital world, I can target even more. I'm going to have this show up to people that are interested in cooking in this zip code, in this gender and economic group. I do have to pay for that because marketing is never really free. I haven't looked at sales solutions, so that's something in my to-do list that I need to educate myself more about. The social selling areas era starts with LinkedIn Sales Navigator. You know the art of selling. We can help with the science. Why does social selling matter? Okay, some results. Great. What is this? Drive social success with LinkedIn Sales Solutions. I guess it depends on your kind of business, what kind of uh, 
product you're selling and how best to let's see learn the top 10 sales tips for today's sellers so if you're in sales so more information um, on the surface uh, LinkedIn might seem kind of one-dimensional. Here's the place where I go to get a job. But notice all of these services that they're bringing together. LinkedIn's been around since 2003. It's been around a while. <coughs> and it's been evolving, making acquisitions. They bought lynda.com, they bought SlideShare, they have all of these extra ancillary things that came from other networks just to bring it all together to, to be a very valuable system. That's why LinkedIn stock is over, you know, $150 or something. It's a valuable company. So valuable that this year, Microsoft bought LinkedIn for like $30 billion. So big, big, powerful, famous Microsoft bought LinkedIn to, you know, use its tools and reach more people and so forth. And um, this is some network to think about regarding um, reaching an audience. So in this class is why we do an overview. We don't go to every single screen and show you every single thing to do, and maybe not exactly the content that you need to share, because people say, what's the best time of, of day to share onto LinkedIn? I can't tell you that. It depends on your audience, your products, but as you use these networks and you go look at the uh, statistics and such, you get statistics when you have a LinkedIn business profile, it'll show you people most often clicked on your posts on Monday at 7 p.m. So there's your answer for you. But Monday at 7 p.m. might be a terrible answer for someone else. As you use it, as you share on a regular basis, the data will then guide you to make future decisions. So any questions as we wind down the main lecture? Is advertising only available for the business accounts, not for the regular profiles? Most likely that's how you want to use it because you've got a business to advertise. But um, I have to double check it. I haven't I haven't used the, the business items on LinkedIn very much. I usually focus on Facebook. That's what works for clients. Yeah. But that's a possibility. <clears throat> Any other general question? Okay, we're going to end the main lecture at this point. We'll have some lab time if anyone needs some help, a little bit one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, I'm going to put my notes into the folder if you want a copy of that, and I'll upload the videos.